part of the rest of the lab. Yeah, so I'm a software developer also serving as innovation manager and community engagement manager at the university, the lab. So here just quickly, I am with my colleagues. Uh, most of them have had UDs in DHS2 <laughs> after their names. So there is Oswald, uh, who is also a technical analyst at the University of Dar es Salaam. Joseph, who is also a senior developer, I think, and others, like good luck, Henry. So I would want for them to more like add up uh, a UDs in DHS2 uh, after their name so they can well be recognized. So I don't want to pass through each and every one of them. So today I will be presenting uh, what we have done so far regarding our development conduct technologies we are using, frameworks, etc. So if you can allow me to share my screen. Uh, yeah. So let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Oh. Yeah, sure. So uh, today I'll be presenting uh, the Angular ecosystem, uh, one of the, the, the ecosystem that the DHS2 lab is using, and the most specifically on how we have uh, used the React component to be specific DHS2 UI components within the, 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 the ecosystem. But before I can just do that, I want to just quickly uh, highlight about our DHS2 lab. Uh, so it was just quickly established 20 years ago uh, in with the aim of uh, being as a technical arm for ministry. So by then we were supporting Ministry of Health and other implementing partners in developing digital solutions. And most of the solution were based on DHS2 uh, platform. Uh, our team comprises of a couple of people. We have full-time technical staffs, which include developers, uh, technical analysts, etc. But also we, we are at the university, so we have some academic staff who mostly act as implementers. So we are the lab that advocates strongly on open source technology. So we have in our team have been working with DHS2, OpenMRIS, some of the fire uh, technologies, OpenFN uh, technology, etc. So the lab currently is focusing on software development and innovation. Also, there is part for research. We have many PhD uh, candidates and PhD holders who are doing different researches, but also we are doing system maintenance and user support across different systems with different ministries, the uh, sub-Saharan uh, countries. Also, we're doing consultations, capacity building, but uh, even more, we are doing the student mentorship. So uh, since we're at the university, we're actually trying our best to bring out from the undergraduate student around DHS2, around working with DHS2 technology and such. And now, recently, we have impacted ourselves on data science and artificial intelligence. So that is a just quick summary about the lab. So the lab is as it is under the College of Information, a Department of Computer Science, and there uh, where you find our lab. Uh, so among others, I just quickly wanted to summarize a couple of what we have built so far. Uh, at least uh, related to DHS2. So uh, we, we had built before the interactive dashboard, a famous interactive dashboard, of course, that gave ways to a couple of dashboards that have been currently used. So for example, the interactive dashboard gave way to some of the pro, pro, vertical program specific dashboard in our country. And we are lucky that some of the functionality also have been adapted by this current uh, called a dashboard that is currently be used within the DHS2 platform. But also we have been developing some of other apps like indicator search, interactive reports. Usually we develop these to solve a couple of issues or problems that we are facing during our support. So like indicator search to aid quickly searching the indicator, interactive reports, there are some issues about standard report that we, we did here, user support uh, to, to simplify support metadata assignment, which 
also was one of the runner up through with in this dark competition also we have ea the sara app that covers the entire surveillance framework but this actually at the moment is private but we are hoping to more like making it public we also you have your ssd manager the one that can help make configuration when you want to use ussd technology data store import export also function maintenance task list among others so i just named the few that we are currently or we had been uh, building ever since uh, so why did i mention this i uh, just want to more like show a quick tech journey that the dhs2 lab has impact itself throughout when we started until now. So I, I wanted to more like put in terms of before some specific frameworks or technology. So uh, before before the Angular framework, uh, you know, before the Angular framework, which, which was called Angular 2, there was this Angular JS, which is the same, but the Angular 2 is now different compared to Angular JS. So we were focusing ourselves around Angular JS. I know also the core team was doing AngularJS back then, also around jQuery and in terms of UI, we are focusing on bootstrap related components. Then after when Angular switched from using JavaScript to TypeScript and then released the Angular 2, we just now switched it to AngularJS. At least by then, we a few of the applications were using AngularJS, so it was quickly rather simple to migrate most of the application to Angular. And of course, we still had, has been used, had been using all other bootstrap and jQueries along our code. But by then, that is when we, we sought to start uh, developing reusable components. So by then, as the apps were increasing, so we did develop menu components of Unity, Priority Data Selection components and Indicator Dictionary. And we were actually connecting them with different applications through Git submodules. So you can have a, another repository for menu, but when you are, you, you are working with a dashboard per se, so you can acquire that through GitHub submodule. So even during the, the Angular uh, uh, phase and before the, the DHS2 application platform, which is now based on React, we still were continuing continuing with Angular. Of course, we, 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 we had moved out from jQuery as it was deprecated, and we, we turned now or switched slowly into my Angular material. So we are, most of the components now, we are migrating them from Bootstrap, not all of them, to material component. But by then, now we sought to have these reusable component published under npm registries uh, instead of uh, github submodules so there are some issues around uh, github submodules so now when the application platform these core dhs2 ui libraries uh, application adapters application runtimes that can enable you to more like quick start your react application based on dhs2 so it was kind of challenging for us. Now, you, you saw a couple of applications that I actually mentioned. Those are the ones that are few, but we, we have done many of them. So it was quite challenging to now see and migrate everything into Angular, into React. Uh, so this is what we thought we can try out and ensure that we use the best practices that are, are being brought by core libraries so what we have done since we are still, uh, we still have uh, many of the Angular applications around. So we thought we can just create some air, some layers like wrappers. So as you can see, just quickly in the diagram, uh, you we have sort of core libraries, but also at the mid part, we, we sort of have tried to create some wrappers. For example, we have one wrapper which is wrapping a shell the one that can give you many and the other components like login and something like that. But also we have some wrappers which can enable you to run uh, the, the, the React component within the Angular. So some of the components have actually been converted or wrapped within the Angular like organization unit. I will show it later. And some 
you actually have uh, you are given a wrapper which you can use any of the react component if that is necessary so also around this process also we we are advocating ourselves in more like moving into platforms independent kind of utilities so despite using angular we thought we could actually have some of the utilities like visualizer by then it was challenging to actually use the plugins or visualization plugins from the core team so we sought to have a framework, a framework independent library so we call it the two visualizer that can run in any platform either it's angular react view or even uh, a, a, a non-platform uh, web uh, application so we also had the two visualizer period and also the library for analytics. Uh, I think I'll may touch base them quickly later. Uh, so this is quickly our tech stack journey. As you can see <laughs> throughout, uh, for example, I joined the, the, the team in 2016, and now it's around eight years. So the team has been working with Angular. So as you may see, it is quite challenging to more like just tell the team you have to forsake Angular, now get back to React and something like that. But it's something that we are trying our best to go and this is uh, one alternative of doing that. Uh, I think as I will be demoing, I will show those possibility of this, what we have proposed, it, or perhaps it can enable many people slowly switching to, to what the DHS2 core team has uh, produced. So just quickly, uh, around those uh, utilities or libraries that we we have provided. So one of it, which I will be demoing today, is is the the, the DHS2 shell we call NG DHS2 shell. Of course, it is already available in npm registries. If you go under the namespace i apps, you will see a couple of it. I will I show a case later. And this basically is the, is the Angular based library. So even in our X, in our namespace, you will see those which starts with ng sub something uh, are meant are Angular based, and those which does not start with ng are actually a flat platform independent libraries. So this was meant to more like abstract that shell. So if you run this, you can have header loading loading. Uh, cycle that's secular loader login model on angular application when you are building and of course this as i said internally it drops this app shell uh which is based on react library uh, for now we have provide, provided a boilerplate like a skeleton but we are working on uh, providing a, a quicker way to more like quick start the installation of this ng just to show. So for example, these are a couple or few of applications uh, inside that we are developing that have used the shell. All of these are Angular. So for example, this first block is the task list application I mentioned there. So the menu is Angular. As you may see, even some of the components, almost all of the components here are based on the, the, the React design system that is advocated by the core team but this is running within the angular but of course we have for example eadsara this application is is using some of other components around angular but we also have managed the ropa has managed to more like have the menu as you may see and some of the buttons as you may see these are based on the dhs2 design system but others probably not but that is something we see as doable in migrating or shifting to to use the, the the dhs2 design standards also the one in the left bottom is also one of the dashboard a uh, sort of a group the dashboard but also it uses the the menu and even the the org unit components and the period components are also used those from the core, core team also there is this form assignment application or metadata assignment which also is based on angular but as you may see, it uses pretty much everything that is from the design uh, system for on, on, on DHS2 UI core components. So that, as you may see, is quickly the impact or the result of this Angular shell. 
So if you allow me, <laughs> I can just qu quickly go to a demo. There are <laughs> so many pieces. I will try my best to really focus. So just for example, I believe you can still see my screen. Um, so just for example, this is a shell. I actually run it for the sake of time. Uh, I want to ju I, I also I just quickly run it so it can be shown quickly. But this is, as you may see, it has the DHS2 manual show on the code how this is, is around. Also welcome. Uh, you can have a button as yes, this is the, the button from the DHS2 UI. But also if you see the you view the components, these are the DHS2 components that these as you can see this is the org is the period this is the org unity component so this is one of the application that has used this the dhs2 wrapper before i can go to the code also as i highlighted this is another application which is called task list also as you may see it also uses some buttons is this step data table uh, even these such as the, the inputs, uh, everything about it is also based on the DHS2 UI components. Also this assignment uh, app also uses the DHS2 component as we see when the org unit component is based on the, the DHS2. And this runs, as I said, uh, within the, the Angular content, context. So uh, just quickly in terms of code, uh, I believe this color is still visible <laughs> to you, uh, but just quickly have to highlight, this is a boilerplate. I try to add some few components to just showcase those other components. So basically, uh, I, at least for those who are working with Angular, uh, at least for a while Angular has been uh, depending on the ng module to more like a bootstrap or or import different modules that you want to use in your component and of course it uses some sort of other services pipes etc but i will just focus on this app module as a starting module when you you start a, an angular application so when you install i will show quickly uh the the documentation on how we, you, you, you store the app shell. So basically uh, you have to supply the app shell module, uh, which actually is the one that bootstraps everything within the app module, which is a root uh, module. And as you are, in, you, are, you are installing or you are adding it, you actually have to provide some of the parameters so there's one parameter which is PWA enabled, whether you need to choose, you need to enable the, the PWA or not. Uh, also, there's this part for dev mode. This is essential because when you are running in local host context now, and when you are deploying, there are some different ways on how the, the, the base URL is being uh, generated within the, 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 the app. Uh, the, the app shell so you have to say whether you are running under development model model production so this is only what you need to add and this comes from from the the component that or the the wrapper that we we, we actually have developed which is here and which is the ng dhs2 shell so this is the the first thing you can see but of course as as you know, usually under index Angular depends on rendering everything under this what, what we call app root. So in order for the wrapper to take shape, so we actually have added that app component that is already as a landing component. We sort of have we sort of have exchanged it and leave it as it is. So if you have we already have your application that is has some many of the codes around app component. You don't want to change everything within the app component. So we added another component that is just app wrapper component that of course it selects that root uh, selector in order for it to be rendered first. And the, 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 the component just simply have this shell component, which under the hood is the one that actually connects with the the, the core DHS2 shell. So here is, you can see we have just 
call the shell component and usually uh, you, we need to check whether this shell is has run or is ready to to be rendered in something like that and of course these other uh, other overrides are essential to know like when you already have rendered the shell what component should be within the shell you know the shell is just a, a container and in, inside it you have to put a component so as you can see uh, here we put the app component which actually is now this one so this will now be rendered within that shell so just quickly if you you you, you see my example for example here this menu and whatever that is before these contents is what is the, the shell and if these content are now what can start within the app component. So if you are Angular developer and you have been doing this, I think you may get my point around what I'm saying. So this is actually what we have done, but uh, there are some things that needs to be done in order to to be able to run that. So actually, we, that is why we have provided the boilerplate. For example, in order to run React uh, components, of course, as you may see, we have installed a bunch of full React libraries. As you may see, we have up, 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 up runtime, everything about React, but also we have installed React itself. But as you are running, you're just running uh, in Angular context. So you may want to change some things on TS configurations some things like to add a JSX instruction on what JSX format should be used. For example, this is using React and of course some of the instructions. So uh, the, the boilerplate already has that covered and now we are working on, on have a generators like you can call ng generate, something like that. So I think I will showcase later an example. So that, that is basically what the shell quickly does. So even if you have an existing application, it's quite easy. If at all these setups are already there that you can just do and make. For example, in my presentation, even these, these applications, for example, the one this, this was already there. So we just quickly added that shell components so that, that that is where where this all starts so uh, just quickly within this boilerplate uh, in my app uh, html as you know uh, sorry i'm diving into the angular but it's necessary here so as you know angular usually kind of help you separate the html the styles uh, in different files so we, we, we in html this is basically what you see. So if you just got here, you'll see there is a welcome, a something. So the app component only start with what you want to, to do within your component. But every other thing menu is already abstracted away within that app shell that is, is already called here. So in app component, you'll see there's a welcome. And of course, we have made some HTTP call, but here is where I want to show case where some of the components can be added. For example, uh, the DHS2 UI library that we have wrapped in, we actually have tried to simply wrap in only two or three components for, for demonstration. So we have wrapped a button component. So this is Angular component, but underneath it drops the button. So as you may see, this is actually the, the DHS2 a button component that is based on the DHS2 UI. But also we, we have wrapped a period component under the hood. And as you can see, this is now the period component. But also we have done that on the all unit select, at least these. Uh, and the reason to at least this is that, for example, all unit selector has some dependencies on how you fetch the all unit. So we had to wrap it in order to, to make to make it possible to, to for them to run within the Angular context, but as we are still we are still working under React in terms of how we fetch from the DHS tool. Uh, at our lab, we are we we have developed another library which is called DHS to HTTP client. What it only does it actually help you connect with the DHS to APIs just using that Angular HTTP module 
and add some properties that can enable you to more like uh, communicate freely with the the, the the API. So for example, if I just want to to get a user, so I can just to say api.me. So basically this me, because it's a normal API, if you call it under the old it uses, it calls the me and the other contents around me. So that is where you can see it's easier to, to capture the name for of the current user who has logged in in this context. So that, that basically is what is happening. But uh, as you may see, these components are not enough. And DHS2 UI has a bunch of components. So how do now, how is now these wrappers helping out using other components? Uh, so this is what we have now discovered as this not only can help other components being used, but also it can start slowly to, to more like a train an Angular developer now to start going into the React context. For example, this is an Angular component. So we have added a TSX extension so that we are able to, to more like use React component within it. So as you may see, this is a mix. So the dependency injection, this is just typically an Angular dependency injection. Uh, and now the task list, for example, here is a React component, which of course, uh, within the, the React, the React hooks, you can still use hooks. And of course, you can still render some components. So here is where you can use other components. For example, if you want to use a circular loader, which comes from the DHS2 UI, as you may see, here is, is it was imported from the DHS2 UI. Or if you want to use task selector bar, for example, in task list, if I show, you can see there's this bar, which is actually the bar that is from the DHS2 UI components. So we can still write the, the, the React kind of code within the Angular component, still being able to acquire even others. For example, the task service, usually the, the Angular component, you need to inject a service or a provider or something like that. So you can still do that. And within the HTML, what we just need to do is just call a wrapper which is angular based, but it allows you to pass in a React component. So within it by itself, it actually uh, run this component as if it is running uh, uh, as uh, a React uh, code. So this basically is what have managed us to use any of the DHS to UI component that you feel you need instead of those that are provided under the hood under this NGDHS2 UI. So in order for you to use it, you can see there's this module which we call React Wrapper module within the NGDHS2 UI, which actually does the tricks of helping you uh, running all other uh, React related uh, 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 components. Even you can have your own uh, React component. So basically what we have done, we, we saw ourselves being able to use whatever strategies that we had before with Angular and also chip in these aspects of, of, of running React. So as you may see, we are actually uh, more of React developers now as we are going along uh, are doing uh, what, what, what we do. Uh, another thing I want to note is uh, as we are running the local environment from our side, we usually put some of the configurations under uh, the proxy config which we can use when developing in development mode. So also Angular has pretty good support around the prox configuration. So this also was made easier uh, around it. So for us, uh, it, it was quite simple to, to, to do something like this. So just quickly, if I want to more like go into what we have done uh, within the code or the library itself, just quickly. Uh, so in our repository, I think I will share this. Uh, we, we have a repository. We have actually grouped all of our packages in one area. 
we call them the two components for matter of convenience and ensuring uh, versions are compatible in most cases. So we have this, what we call a package. So within the packages, that is where we can, we, we have different components that is happening. Um, I can see the network. Can you still hear me? I hope. Yeah, yeah, we're still oh, hearing right, and seeing right. you. Yeah, sure, sure. So anyways, oh, let me just quickly go local. Uh, sorry about it. So just quickly, I want to open up a, a, a code base for, for the, the two components. So just as you may see, we, we have some packages. So what we have done, we have a couple of packages that we are running around or that we are developing. So there's this, the, the two shell component or wrapper. So basically the, there are some explanation on how, so there's a readme, you can read about how to install, how to use it, what it does. So it also uses some of what we call NG schematics for, for Angular developers, they may know what that means. So what we are working now is if you use ng add and call that the, that UI component, then it can do every conversion or every it can attach everything within your existing Angular code and you don't have to do anything later. So that is something we're finalizing, but for now you can use that boilerplate. And of course, as you may see, the code that is happening inside here is simply uh, we are, within this ng shell component is basically we are uh, wrapping the the app adapter that is is provided from the core team of course there are some things that i may have to check in with the core team to 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 sort out there are some few challenges but this is what is actually happening so we have actually have used that, that app adapter and within this area, that is where every other uh, components that are based on Angular that are, are coming in. So as you may see, all, all of other stuffs are coming from the DHS to, I think, shell component or adapter. So this is actually adapter. So basically this is what is doing. And of course, in the module, that is where we, as you may say, there was that for root. So before you can initialize any ng module, you can just pass in some configuration that you want, if at all, uh, they are necessary. So this basically is, in summary, what we, we have done. So there are a lot of things around here. Let me just quickly go on with my presentation uh, because of time, and then we can discuss uh, just quickly further. So. Uh, just to finalize or to, to more like go as I was showing. So we also have uh, the UI library as I showcased. So this is the one that wraps uh, whatever that you can run with React. But for now it comes with header. So if you want to explicitly use header component, you can have or unit selector as I highlighted period selector button module, but also we have this React wrapper module, a powerful module that now can allow you to wrap any of the React components. So these are the examples, but we also have many other components as I highlighted. So we have this utility we call the tool visualizer. By then we built to provide our extended visualization. So there are some visualization which were needed to extend. So we actually built this library. You can find it under iApps D2 Visualizer. Also, this you can just use it within any, uh, even 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 play, plain JavaScript. So you just need to have a div and call this new visualizer. You can set configuration, which usually is even that visualization favorite. You can set where you want to render or type of what you want to render and then call draw. So this draw will, will actually automatically render the components. So it can render a single, single line, I think it's a single value. It can render a chart table. Also there are some of the GIS features that this can also do. So also we have some period utilities. Before then we actually using our own period implementation. So we actually had developed period utilities where you can uh, get 
the period information or period parameters. For example, you can use this. This is also a plain uh, if, if from an independent entity that you can say a new period, you can set what calendars. So currently it's supporting two calendars. Uh, you can also set years if you want. If you don't, the current will be used. You can set type, which type you want, either monthly or any other type. Also set preferences like here, what future period you want to open and get. Here you can get a list or if you want to get by a certain ID. So it can give you product period information, including start date and the end date for each period. Also, there's this function analytics. It was developed uh, back then when uh, something like custom, custom indicators were not around. There are some issues where you want to sort of use some information from SQL or view, for example, or org unit or data value and combine them with more or more of other analytics analytics calls and then return a single analytics call. So from there, we actually had developed a function analytics that where you can set, for example, a data that you want to send, or the unit period, set parameters if you want to just run analytics and then under post process before giving the result to the final user, then you can process some things uh, based on your implementation and then the final result will be the analytics. So that this area depends solely on what you want for, to process, but the end result should be analytics. So this was also one of other utilities and the many other, I just named the few. So getting back to the DHS2 shell, uh, there are some known issues, some of, of which I think I already have discussed with the core team. We are, we are looking into pinpointing the actual cause and finding solution for it. So there's this part for PWA. So progressive web, web uh, support is really not working properly, but that is something that we are looking for. So this wrapper, you, you may find it can give you problems around PWA. That's why you can see where that PWA enabled, at least for now, you can just put it forth. I think once the issue is resolved, if you put it through, then it will be enabled. But also for Angular Dev, you know the Angular, in terms of change detection, is using Zone JS to capture the change that are happening in the DOM. Of course, they are, they are going now to, to, to deprecate it anytime soon, but as, what, as, as of now, you may face some issues when you are interacting with React components. So you may find yourself, you are making a change and a change is, is reflected later rather than immediate. So if you, you face that challenge, you can explicitly uh, trigger the, the, you can explicitly highlight the zone JS to trigger the change. So if you make a change in, in your React component, you can just call just in run and call whatever code that you want to change. This is a workaround that you can do. Uh, but also you may find in some instances, uh, not all, uh, where you, you may not see the menu where, where, when you are in development mode. So this is because uh, somehow in some instances that the call to, to get the modules uh, kind of does not support proxy. You know, we are using a proxy, something like Locust, you are setting your proxy server. So somehow this uh, API usually, do, in some instances, uh, it, it does not really uh, reflect the proxy. So you'll see just a blue, a blue menu, but that's quite okay. It's something that you just see within the development environment. But when you build the application, you will see the application has menu and everything in it. Uh, but another issue also is uh, we have at the moment fixed some versions of oh, app adapter, app runtime, and app the NDHS2 UI due to some compatibility issues that are happening under the hood. So this is also something I think uh, I can communicate more with the core team and see if at all there's something we can do about it. But, so you may find app adapter inside it is using some of the D2 UI component. So if you just quickly update this component without considering the compatibility, then some things may fail. But now that is why we, we, we sort of have, have fixed. Uh, now, next step for this, just quickly, 
Uh, as I said, we are now currently trying to make smooth installation of this once fully completed. Uh, someone can just quickly say ng add. As you know, when you are adding, for example, Angular material or NGRX, if you are using Angular, you can see there's also these schematic syntaxes where you say ng add and then you put the name of the library. So this is what we are currently doing. I think we are close to completion where you can just use this and automatically the, 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 the schematic will add everything for you. But for now, at least we can use that boilerplate component that uh, I think I will show my co colleague can share for you. Also, of course, we are moving into resolving the, the, the PWA uh, issues. So I think for now, let me stop. <laughs> uh, Sante Sana, I think I've had talked a lot. Uh, back to you, Rene, for now.